Ladies and gentlemen, I welcome everybody who's here in this hall and uh, who are watching us online. Uh, I am going to speak about two things, uh, whether, uh, whether uh, power engineering and IT come together or there is IT in power engineering. On the one hand, power engineering in itself is very conservative, but it is closely related to the dynamically uh, developing IT field. So what do they have in common? This is a very wide topic. And in such a uh, short period of time, I can't give you an overview of everything. But in my presentation, I would like to point out the most important issues and give some examples. You all know what is IT, because nowadays uh, you can't imagine a, a person who uh, has no idea what IT is and has no contact with it. For example, let's take a telephone. So this was a very conservative device some, well, 15 years ago, it was on the table of every office, you could only call by it. But during the last 10, 15 years, uh, it has uh, turned into a compact device used by billions of people all over the world. It was possible only thanks to the development technology and applications. But the most important thing is the change in the uh, world understanding of the people. Things that uh, 10, 15 years ago seemed to be uh, science fiction, uh, our everyday routine today. Uh, you uh, just pay for your uh, movie tickets. Uh, you, you, you use uh, all kinds of uh, um, applications. Uh, you can communicate in different ways. In power engineering, things are different. We uh, heat our homes, we use electricity every day, but practically nobody thinks where electricity comes from, what could the problems be that are related to it. Uh, recently, energy prices have skyrocketed and it became a very topical um, theme everywhere and something had to be done. This is a chart here explaining what happened at the end of the year. I think you were all hurt by the increase of electricity prices. Well, you didn't. Oh, then uh, you are very lucky if you even didn't notice. If you didn't notice it. But now, uh, a small. Uh, aside, and I would like to explain to you why uh, I started taking interest in this topic. Uh, when I was doing my master's degree, I asked a professor that I asked a professor what um, field to attach myself to, and one professor said that that uh, if you really want to have a lot of space for your development, find a field that has very few basic definitions. I didn't grasp the idea at the moment. It took me years. But in dynamically developing fields, there are uh, not very firm foundations. For example, when you have a very expensive car, you drive along a, a bad road, you may end up in a ditch or you may reach your uh, destination. Another example, you only know what it, your destination is, but how to reach your destination. This is a, uh, uh, a uh, very difficult question. You are just like a mole under the ground. You don't see light at all. But now let's come back to power engineering again. We have to understand that over the last decades, uh, a lot has happened. The development has been uh, rapid and it is necessary to go through all the principles 
uh, of the whole field, it creates a lot of problem, but at the same time, it opens um, ample opportunities. Some people do not like to speak about pro problems, they like challenges, but it is said that uh, if a problem can be solved by means of money, then it is an expense. But power engineering and uh, power engineering from renewables uh, affects uh, absolutely everybody. We can start, we can improve it, uh, we can uh, start uh, with um, improving the efficiency of devices, we can uh, end up at solar panel fields, windmills. IT doesn't only uh, solve uh, urgent problems, but it creates the basis for new fields. Now, a couple of examples of innovative uh, services in the field of power engineering, because it illustrates very well the combination of energy uh, and um, IT. Uh, and it shows the synergy between uh, energy, IT, and management. One uh, friend of mine said that the greenest energy is the the energy that has not been produced. There seems to be a controversy in it. But if you start thinking in the same lines, then the energy is not produced is equivalent to the energy not consumed if we know that we uh, do not use uh, need it. But how to motivate people to consume less? Most people do not want to change their habits uh, getting out of the um, um, field of comfort. So what can motivate people? What can motivate people to accept change? What is important for the people? So here is a chart. I give you a couple of seconds so that you could look at it and find the place of a stone. Actually, Estonia is right in the middle. The vertical axis shows um, uh, the level of innovation and the horizontal axis shows the adaption rate, how quickly people are ready to accept the innovation. It shows very well the fact that it is not enough to come up with a great idea, but you have to convince people that innovation is necessary and that people have to be ready to accept this innovation. And here we, now I am going to tell you about digital twins. This is one of the technologies that help us. The main idea is that you collect and process uh, a lot of data and then you model the consumer, uh, uh, the consumer behavior on this basis. Uh, nowadays, uh, people uh, leave a lot of data. Uh, for example, they are, uh, they, there might be open data or consumers are ready to, uh, to grant access to the data. For example, where they live, um, how much they uh, consume, what they consume, who the neighbors are, etc., etc., etc. So, uh, using the digital twins, uh, it is possible to predict uh, consumer behavior. Here we use different tools uh, that can pick up uh, small pieces of information that you need at the moment from the huge amount of data. In that case, we can assess uh, consumer behavior very quickly and we can predict um, what could be the steps that uh, improve energy, the uh, energy efficiency and the use of energy? We have to understand what could motivate people. Some uh, are interested in money. They uh, are willing, they want to pay less and then we can offer them some services that are less expensive. Others are interested in technology. They would like to install, for example, an A-class uh, um, equipment. 
in their apartments. Some want to be better than their neighbors in energy saving, etc., etc. So people have different needs and wants. Besides the motivation, the digital twin can suggest to each customer what services they could use. And this is a non-invasive way to influence people. We don't want... We don't want to interfere with their life. We don't want to make anybody, but we like to create a, an environment that uh, simply nudges people towards better behavior. No, let's think about uh, pedometers. So the pedometer tells you that you have to uh, put in some effort because you haven't done so many steps that you wanted to. In the future, the digital twin system could be based on small technology and then it would inform the customer of its uh, uh, consumation, consumer pattern and would give uh, advice what to change in the behavior. So the field that uh, I am speaking about today it is very, very wide. You can speak about anything here. But this was one of uh, specific example that uh, I hope interested you. In the end, I would say that the future belongs to all of us and everybody has the right to decent life and we can um, contribute, all of us, to make life decent. Uh, thank you, Yuri. Could you please uh, speak about could you please speak about uh, uh, some projects, uh, cooperation projects with the specific companies in the energy sector? Well, there have been a lot, a lot of projects during the last couple of years. We've had some projects in the field related to smarting, smartening up buildings. How? Now, for example, in large buildings, in shopping malls, there are all kinds of technologies, all kinds of devices. They are not very smart. The question is how to make them proactive, how to make them smarter, so that they could use all the surrounding information, the fluctuations in the ele electricity price, uh, climate conditions, and how to make the management system intelligent, which is the most intelligent uh, shopping mall in Estonia. And there are quite a few. Ulemiste, for example. So they adapt uh, their, uh, all their systems uh, to the uh, outer conditions, etc. They are moving in the right direction. They, are they have become much smarter.